Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Did you know this episode comes with a free gift? It's a webinar for aspiring authors who want to learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing books. You can access this free training instantly at shewroteabook.com slash bonus. Now let's get started. You are listening to episode number five of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Nina Ober, author of the book, Listen, Learn, Love, Lead, 40 Simple Messages for an Inspired Life. Simple Messages for an Inspired Life is filled with bite-sized wisdom that makes you not only stop and think, it inspires you to live the life you want to live each and every day. It's more than just a book that she wrote. It's a mantra that she promotes. Nina Ober is an exceptional listener, freedom facilitator, and training and development specialist in human connection. Best known for her positive energy, great listening skills, and her ability to simplify things for others. Again, her book is called Listen, Learn, Love, Lead, 40 Simple Messages for an Inspired Life. You can find the link to her book, or you can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at shewroteabook.com slash the number five. Awesome, Nina. Okay, so I'm so glad you're a guest. Um, I can't wait to talk to you about your book. My first question for you is this. Why did you decide to write and publish your book? Well, thank you uh, once again for having me. I'm really excited about chatting about why I wrote a book and how it all came about. So I am uh, not only a um, speaker, but I'm a coach. And, you know, when you're out and about and you're learning about this industry, they say, as I say in quotations, <laughs> that you should write a book. And um, the funny thing is, is I've always known myself as not a writer. And what I found out was that you don't really have to write your book. You can actually speak your book. So when I heard that, I got really excited because, you know, I've been a speaker for 20 years. And when someone said you could speak it and have it transcribed and then you have a book, I was all on board. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I bet that, I mean, I I love that technique. I do share that technique with some of my clients. Um, I think it ends up being a lot cheaper, too, sometimes than just hiring a ghostwriter to write the book for you. So um, what, I, since you brought up the topic of speaking your book, what tools did you use to record your book? Okay. So the long and short of it is that I really went the low end way. So I'm your um, probably frugal book writer here (laughs) or book speaker. Um, I had been doing once a week and I still do it. um, One minute videos on my Facebook fan page. And so they were up there. And as you know, a year had passed and I was thinking about writing this book and when um, the title just kept coming back to me and, you know, as I had, you had said, it was my mantra. I thought to myself, I wonder, you know, and then when someone said, speak your book, I thought I've already spoken my book in these one minute vignettes. So I actually took the one minute that were now uploaded to YouTube and I transcribed them between myself and my daughter. (laughs) Oh, Um, perfect. Yeah. So like I said, we did it the frugal way. So we, we transcribed it and then we figured out, you know, what, what videos we had and which ones fit with um, the title of the book and what my, my whole message is and and simplifying your life and in life in general. Um, Mm -hmm. Then I just used online tools, to be honest with you, to go through uh, the grammar um, and things like that. So uh, again, really the tools that were already there, I just, use them. Perfect. I love it. So, so moral of the story, anybody can write a book and there's a million ways to do it. You can invest thousands of dollars or you can figure out how to do it on your own. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, um, so, so your book title is listen, learn, love, lead. Tell me a little bit about how you came up with that title and, and, and why you chose those words. Well, A couple of years ago, I was working with a coach, and they had us go through um, this exercise of trying to remember back 
your childhood as far back as you could remember. And I pretty much all my life would tell people, I don't remember much. I, I don't remember much until I was really forced to put pen to paper and really try to remember, you know, uh, good feelings, bad feelings, situations, all that kind of stuff. And what I realized was much of my life early on, I was a listener because I was a follower. <laughs> and I always just wanted to have people around me and be around groups of people. And I felt like if I spoke that um, I might rock the boat and then not have any people around me. It's really, you know, part of my story. So I really started thinking about what is a skill that I think is so important that we all could could do better in or learn in or whatever the case may be. And so everything in my life begins and ends with listening. So I knew that listen was a part of my message. And then from that, I have been a lifelong learner. I still am. I do believe you can learn something every day. So that was a natural fit. I do um, know that I have to work on loving unconditionally and and always um, putting love in the equation. So that felt right to me. And what I realized all my life from 17 until now, I've always been in some sort of leadership position. And I love alliteration. And these words just kept coming up as I was doing this deep work on my life. And it just seemed to fit right. And it's funny how now every time when I'm going out to speak or I'm, I'm doing my training materials or anything like that, really these words totally resonate with my simple message um, on how to live. For an inspired life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You mentioned that you've been a speaker for the last 20 years. What kind of speaking do you do? Most of what I um, train on or teach is in um, communication. Of course, I like to call it human connection because I feel like we're missing that um, right now. You know, we are more, uh, you know, air quotes, connected than ever, but I really feel like we are totally disconnected. So I I speak a lot on communication. Uh, Again, just very um, easy things, simple things to learn that I think somehow has gotten lost in the shuffle. I also do much of my my training and speaking on leadership and um, sometimes just some fun stories, you know, about uh, life. It depends on which avenue I'm in, but I really have picked the lane of human um, connection and communication. Very cool. So what do you think about social media then these days? Uh-huh. And how it fits in. Wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the old adage, I have a love hate relationship with it. Um, I do have two older daughters. And so, of course, I love it when <laughs> they use it and I can see what's going on. Um, and then on the flip side, I, I kind of have a hate relationship with it because I feel that so many people um, have turned to just that avenue of connection and have really lost the whole um, let's meet face to face. Let's look each other eye to eye. I actually do some training with some teens. Um, I volunteer my time at the YMCA and I'm really, I'm really amazed. And I have to admit a little worried um, because I I do feel like the kids think I'm crazy because I want to look them in the eye and shake their hand and say hello and introduce myself and, and I, I I feel like they would be more comfortable if I just did it through technology. So, yeah. you know, again, in one hand, I love it. I've met, this is how we met. So what a great connection um, that I was able to meet you. So I feel that there is a place for it, but I don't believe it should be the only place for communication. Why do you, why do you think it's become the only place for communication for many of us? Oh, Wow. And now we're getting I, philosophical. Um, I know. I'm curious. I'm curious to see what you think. Yeah. I think it's because it's easy. I mean, I think a yeah. lot of us are always looking for like a shortcut. You know, we Absolutely. don't have to get dressed up. We don't have to put our makeup on. We don't have to go out and network the old fashioned way. Right. All we have to do is just hop into a Facebook group and <laughs> mingle. Yeah, I totally <laughs> agree. And um, And I can see, yes, I agree with you that that's probably why people are doing it. I would... Um, I, I I have a feeling that some people, uh, they've now made it that that's their comfort zone. And I 
I, I believe in the face-to-face networking. I believe in going out. I do work um, out of my home, and I am a solopreneur. So, of course, that means I'm alone a lot. I do a lot of brain training also, and it's been proven that it's not really good for the brain um, when you're by yourself so much. Um, and I feel like when people do use the social media kind of behind the screen, all that kind of stuff, I think sometimes maybe – they're not putting their true self out there because you can, you can put whatever persona you want out there. And it's, it's much more of a, um, a stretch when you got to go out and really show, you know, match your inner self with your outer self. So, Absolutely. yeah, uh, I don't know. Absolutely. No, that's a great, great response. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so I guess one of the, you know, one of the things, uh, behind hiding behind social media is, or or one of the things that you lose from not going out to network is you don't actually get to see a person's smile and mm-hmm. speaking of smiles I want to ask you this um, I saw that your book has a smile reflection page yeah what is what is that tell me a little bit more about that I'm curious oh well, I'm so glad you asked about that it was so funny because when I was going through the videos and then we're transcribing them and now I'm connecting some famous quotes with, you know, what I spoke for the book, I knew deep down, as I explained before, because I had done the deep work and I had put pen to paper. There's actually scientific proof that putting pen to paper, not typing on a, on a computer, but putting pen to paper, there's a deeper connection to what you write. You can remember things. It's, it's all connected to the brain. So I really knew because I do practice journaling every single day. I have a journaling partner. We've been journaling over 400 days every single day. I knew I had to have a part of that. And I guess my training background, wanting people to remember and have an acronym or literation, you know, I'm all into that. I started to ask myself questions. What did I want them to get out of this? And just by... Uh, coincidence, which I don't believe in, um, I came up with the word smile. And um, I do believe that is the greatest gift we can give someone else. So that's why I wanted people to really, you know, say, how does this message speak to your spirit? You know, what does this message mean to you? How will you use this message to inspire you? And how will this message lead your life easily? Because, of course, that is what I want. I I think we make life more difficult than it needs to be. And I I want to remind that. I want people to be reminded of that. So to the listener, smile. Smile more (laughs) and um, (laughs) journal more and get out and meet people more. (laughs) Well, it's funny. I was just, I have a training class this week. So I was doing some research, which I love to do because I'm a learner. And one of the things they said was, um, because one of my messages is just feel good. Feel good first, then just do it. And so I looked up an article, and it said the quickest ways to feel good, number one, was to turn off the Internet. Oh. Another one was to turn off your phone. Ah. Ah, (laughs) one of them was. One of them was smiling. And then, of course, my favorite one, well, two of my favorite ones were dance, because I love to dance, and then call someone you love. So that's been kind of resonated in my mind. And, um, you know, it's it's not easy to always practice what you preach, but I certainly do do try. Very cool. Very cool. So, uh, Nina, in five words or less, can you tell me what you love most about being an author? Being able to connect and inspire new people. Perfect. I love it. Thank you. Nina, You're welcome. thank you so much. Okay, so it's been great having you as our guest today. Um, we will have a link to your book in the show notes for this episode. So our listeners can find that at shewroteabook.com slash the number five to learn more about our author and her book. Thanks again, Nina. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you for listening to She Wrote a Book. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe now so you can automatically get access to all new episodes and feel free to share your inspired thoughts with us in the comments too. I'd love to hear from you. Are you ready to write your own book? 
Get started now with my quick and concise webinar so you can learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing your own book. Claim your free gift now at shewroteabook.com slash bonus. Until then, may you always feel good and make magic. Feel good, make magic now. Lena Anani will show you how. Ignite that wisdom inside of you and show the world what you do to publish right and promote learn the best way to go